Supervisor Richard Forster with your Board of Supervisors uh, bi-weekly, in some cases more than bi-weekly, report from November 13, 2012, Board of Supervisors meeting. And uh, first up today, we had Maureen Funk and uh, Tracy Berkner in. Tracy was the past president of the uh, Amateur Council on Tourism. Maureen is the executive director, thanking the Board of Supervisors for their support on the transient occupancy tax ballot measure and their uh, faith to put it on the ballot to uh, be voted on by the public as a general tax. Now we might as well talk about that right now. We had the uh, Amateur County uh, Chamber of Commerce President, Mark Borchin. Mark has done an absolutely wonderful job of uh, being the leader in uh, restructuring the chamber and taking care of issues at the chamber. So now basically they're brand new organization, they're being run correctly. And uh, thanks Mark for all of that work. Um, Mark is also uh, on this day requesting the Board of Supervisors for an allocation of $25,000 uh, to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this uh, request is coming in when the budget only allocated $10,000. Uh, Mark did present a uh, full report from the Chamber on their finances. Uh, the Board had uh, some questions. Uh, primarily in the areas of like salaries where it's going from 30 to 45,000 and uh, there were satisfactory answers to those questions. Uh, the board did want to fund this, but uh, there was only 10,000 allocated. Uh, we did uh, break and hold this item over for a little bit and then came back and another 10,000 was in another economic development line item. So um, that came up to 20. My motion was to include uh, another five out of contingency that motion carried three to two, which failed because it needs a four-fifths for a uh, budget transfer. Uh, the next motion was by Supervisor Plaz for um, $5,000 to be taken out of the new 10% uh, uh, rate on the transient occupancy tax. Uh, several of us did not feel that was correct and that money should not come out of that pod uh, for various reasons. So that motion failed three to two. Uh, the, the final motion by myself was uh, for the 20000 and that was approved uh, 5 to 0 by the board. Uh, just one comment on that uh, increase in TOT1, we only have about uh, a half a year left on that in our budget cycle. So it, uh, the increase will amount to about $65,000. There is a perception out there from some people in the community that that money was slated to go to tourism. And uh, that those comments were made by business council representatives and chamber representatives as they supported the uh, TOT ballot measure. So we're going to hash that out at a different board meeting. I know uh, pretty much everybody is uh, sticking their hands in the pot now and wants a little bit of that money. Uh, the goal in the end was not to dilute that money so that it wouldn't have any impact on the county. The goal was to uh, put it, uh, as I saw it, towards uh, tourism and through one organization. Some of the other board members uh, didn't see it that way, but it was never discussed in an open session at the board. It was discussed within the community organization. So we're gonna have to hear from them separately. Uh, the chamber was funded 20 with the uh, thought that they could be funded additional money down the road if that money is found. Uh, other issues that came up, uh, Ms. Kim Grady was uh, appointed as our, um, our uh, clerk recorder to uh, take over from Sheldon Johnson on December 29th. That is Sheldon's uh, retirement uh, resignation date. Um, as you know, uh, this was discussed before. Sheldon's doing that for personal reasons and uh, I appreciate him doing that for his uh, for family or other reasons. But uh, he made the recommendation of Kim Grady. The board looked at uh, two alternatives, either appointing Miss Grady into that position or uh, going with a consolidation of departments with the assessor's office and clerk recorder. Other counties have done this. Uh, that uh, looked like a good idea until our assessor, Jim Rooney, said that he would probably need to fill uh, himself with another position behind it because of the extra duties he would have to assume. The board didn't think that was a good idea, especially when they saw the cost increases that uh, would occur. So it would actually cost more to go the uh, other direction. Miss Grady will fill that position. It is my understanding she uh, has the intention to run for that uh, office in two years when the term expires. Environmental Health Department fees was held over and back to the Administrative Committee. Um, this is a case where Environmental Health is not bringing in enough money to be sustainable. 
Uh, we don't have enough money to pull out of the general fund to backfill. The, the department is down to about bare bones now. I know a lot of people might say, well, that's good. We don't uh, need environmental health out there. But actually, you do under state law to uh, cover a lot of the inspections that are being made. And uh, by the way, uh, reason for a lot of these fees is uh, AB 1616, AB 1130. Uh, let's see, there's one more there, uh, AB 885, AB 300, all new laws passed at the state level, thanks to our legislators in Sacramento uh, for increasing our costs. We had a lot of public hearings. The board uh, finally um, was finished at 5 p.m. on Thursday the 13th after uh, a long hearing on the uh, Arroyo Ditch. Uh, and an appeal filed there and another appeal filed on the Irish Hill Quarry. It was a four to one vote on the Irish Hill Quarry with that issue passing. Uh, myself, I was the dissenting vote. It is my area and I was trying to show uh, some respect for the people there and agreements made in the past. With that, we have to go, looks like, to a break. And uh, we'll be back with uh, Sue Ann and myself and Jeanette. <coughs>